Let's get some analysis now with Rachel Baxendale, Victorian political reporter at The Australian. Rachel, lots to talk about. A massive week in Victorian politics. We saw in the wake of the Andrews resignation, the right pushing back and Ben Carroll getting the deputy premiership. Do you see that on show as well with this new look cabinet? Yeah, look, to some extent we do. I don't know whether people necessarily expected that education would be the portfolio that Ben Carroll would pick for himself, but I suppose we do have some precedents with that. James Molino, who was Daniel Andrews's deputy and from a different right faction but from the right um, for, for a number of years, chose the education portfolio for himself. Prue Carr in New South Wales is the deputy premier. Um, who, who has education. Um, so, so interesting that um, that, that was what, uh, what Ben Carroll chose to do. Um, another really interesting aspect of it is uh, the sort of super portfolio that um, Jacinta Allen previously held. So she essentially had responsibility for, for transport infrastructure and the suburban rail loop. So the Andrews government's signature big build. She's given that to Danny Pearson, which is a pretty massive promotion for, for him. Um, he, he's also um, from, from the right, but from a different part of the right to, to Ben Carroll. Uh, um, a, a pretty big promotion in the left is uh, Harriet Shing has taken uh, the housing portfolio. She's taken that from Colin Brooks, uh, who previously held it. Of course, it's only a fortnight since the uh, then Andrew's government uh, handed down its uh, housing policy statement, basically its vision for, uh, for for housing policy reform in the next decade, and they've really highlighted that um, as an area that, that they um, want to make serious reform in. So pretty significant that mm. it was Harriet Shing who only only entered the ministry a reasonably short short time ago uh, who yeah. has um, been given that responsibility and that it's been taken away from Colin Brooks. Indeed, and it's such a, a, a massive shift in the whole government, a, a Premier with nowhere near the same profile. Understandably, we're talking about one of the most prominent p politicians, not just in Victoria, but in the country, in Daniel Andrews, having vacated the scene. As you sit here now this Monday and look back at the events of last week and the blow-up from Andrews in the caucus when he didn't get his way, the fact that his resignation basically started... Uh, the, the pushback from the right faction saying we're not going to cop this anymore. Is there a broader sense within the caucus as well that they're not going to accept a, an autocratic leadership from the new Premier? I think there's an extent to which there's there's a view that that's just not an option for Jacinta Allen. Um, it was how Daniel Andrews did business, but he was able to do that because he commanded authority. He commanded authority because he, you know, as as some people who didn't particularly like him put it to me last week, he he was an election winning machine, and and to some extent, um, people just had to you know, put put up with him running the show the way he wanted to. Jacinta Allen doesn't have that power. Um, and, and I think uh, last week uh, fairly comprehensively demonstrated that um, at, at the end of the day on Wednesday, she was standing there with the bloke who had uh, um, a couple of hours earlier indicated that he would challenge her for the premiership as her deputy. Uh, so I think um, I, I think whether whether she likes it or not, there's going to have to be um, a greater degree of collaboration um, that, that goes on, uh, and it'll be mm. interesting to see how that plays out. Well, the fact that her her deputy her choice for deputy uh, was not was not achieved. The, the, the deputy premier is from the right, uh, in and of itself, is going to make her have to be more collegiate. The, the other side of politics, they've got a chance to reset as well, Rachel, and they've done that via their front bench. What uh, did you make of it? <laughs> they have. I mean, interestingly, one of, one of the biggest um, changes is that the bloke who lost to elections, Matthew Guy, is back on the front bench. Uh, I, he is um, he is one of one of their um, stronger performers, but I think that you know to some degree shows the state the Victorian Liberal Party is in 
uh, at the moment. And it was a bit of an every every kid wins a prize. No one's really been demoted. And if you sort of take um, shadow parliamentary secretaries into account uh, in in the state libs, I think there are six people out of 30 who uh, who don't have um, either a front bench or a parliamentary secretary position in the state opposition. Uh, but some interesting changes. There are sort of some some younger um, so, some of the people who are sort of perceived as being you know um, talented up and comers. Evan Mulholland obviously um, has replaced uh, Matt Bark, who of course um, quite suddenly and unexpectedly announced that he was leaving politics last month. Uh, so Evan Mulholland's in an in an interesting kind of um, outer suburban development housing housing affordability uh, type role. Uh, we saw David Southwick swapped Commonwealth Games, which of course, um, now they've been cancelled, is no longer a, um, a relevant portfolio for cost of living. So it is interesting to see the areas that the opposition have decided they want to focus on. They're, they're really conscious of the fact mm. that those issues like housing affordability and cost of living are, are of huge concern to Victorians at the moment. And Rachel... Just finally, as you know, as well as anyone, the key for the for any political party is unity. While they've got a chance to reset and take on this new look Labor government, they need unity. Um, how are the prospects for that in what has been a troubled political party in Victoria? Uh, you mean for the Liberal Party? For the Liberal Party, yes, indeed. Yeah, yeah. Uh, look, not great, um, if we're completely honest. Uh, John Pesuto still has this prospect of not one but two defamation cases hanging over his head. Uh, I, I'm pretty sure the 28 days um, that uh, was, was set to elapse for Kelly J. Keane, the UK women's rights activist who's suing him and his entire leadership team, uh, for defamation elapsed last week. So he's got that hanging over his head and, of course, Mo Moira Deeming threatening the same thing. Uh, and really significant um, division uh, over that issue and a number of others. But but I think that that issue was kind of the lightning rod um, uh, in, in his party room. So huge opportunity for, for the Liberal Party um, in, in terms of, um, you know, they're up against a, a, a third-term government, which is always a significant opportunity at a time when there are significant challenges, none more so than, than the economic challenge and, and the huge debt that Victoria is, is increasingly facing. But um, the, mm. it, it possibly even bigger challenges in terms of keeping the team together. Yeah, that's right. And there's no chance if they can't do that. Ra Rachel Baxendale, great to chat. Appreciate it. Thanks very much, Kieran.